So we know it can hide and survive in the skin. So getting the skin temperature up in temperature can um, possibly be effective in part of this treatment. Of course, you'll probably look like a prune, Tom, when you get out of the hot tub, right? Uh, very, very true. I've heard some some big stories, and uh, all of this comes from um, uh, the experience with, with treating syphilis. Prior to um, World War II, the availability of penicillin was very low, and so the primary treatment for syphilis was hyperthermia or uh, hot tubbing and steam cabinets. Interesting. I'm not a fan of vaccines, but is there one for Lyme disease? Well, our nonprofit organization uh, was very much opposed to the vaccine that did come out. Uh, two years before it came out, we had written articles saying that it was a uh, poorly designed vaccine and could potentially cause problems. Oh, and we were not the only ones. There were uh, many others that uh, put their hat in the ring for um, not developing this vaccine. And the reason is they chose a protein to make the vaccine out of that was a protein on the bacteria called outer surface protein A. And it turns out if you have had a history of Lyme disease, that protein may have embedded itself in your joints. So now if you're going to make antibodies with the vaccine against that protein, you're actually attacking your own joints. And this was the fear. Uh, the company, uh, Smith Klein Beecham, uh, took the vaccine off the market voluntarily, but there's still pending lawsuits because of arthritis that happened. And it was also known that patients with a tissue type called HLA DR4 were especially prone to this um, uh, type of arthritis that the vaccine could uh, initiate. And so even though it was voluntarily withdrawn, um, I think it was really a poor decision to uh, go ahead with it. And we have people in our support group that are absolutely devastated from the vaccine. So I've oh, seen... Good stand, at least. Yeah. I'm glad you took that position. Let's go to Chicago, Illinois. Arlene's with us east of the Rockies. Good morning, Arlene. Hi, good morning. I just want to make sure I have the names correct and any information because my husband was diagnosed. Uh, they found the limes in his blood. Uh, fortunately, our cardiologist internist uh, did a test uh, after we visited my brother in Missouri and found the limes. Uh, he does have dementia. He does have a heart problem. He has a problem in the joints. In fact, his joint is so bad that the surgeons don't want to operate uh, you know, because of the, the heart condition. They said leave him alone because he's, uh, not feel, he doesn't feel any pain. This man walks. It's very difficult. He doesn't feel the pain. Uh, he ha uh, there are incidents, incidents where he was seeing people. I mean, everything he's talking about, I'm just. I'm going to call my cardiologist, and I want to have it really straight that I can have him do the research because he gets an IV uh, every two weeks. Um, the doctor gives him an IV. He's also on what they call ECP external pulsation. Uh, 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 excuse me, compression pulsation ECP, and that I take. I drive this guy. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to my doctor's where he has these beds to help his heart, which his heart is slowly getting better. However, the blood, the doctor said, is still not getting to the brain. He's not getting that extra uh, oxygen uh, that he should have. And when he's getting these ECP treatments, he does get oxygen Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I take him there. He gets an hour treatment on the bed, half hour relaxation, and then another hour. And it's helping the heart. But as far, he can no longer drive. And sometimes he didn't know me, and then he does know me. Oh, uh, it, it, everything that you say, but I want to make sure. I hope Coast to Coast is going to have a link up. And I think at first I thought you were Dr. Andrew Peck. No, no, no. Tom, this, is, this, Tom, this is Tom the victim who decided Tom to do victim. this full time. That's why I want to make sure in how you spell your last name, Tom, because I want to make sure I give all this information to my cardiologist. And we should probably be seeing a neurologist from if what you would like. Uh, uh, would you like me to give uh, some contact information here? 
Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. And also, yes. I just want everyone to know that your websites are linked up at coasttocoastam.com. Good. Uh, excellent. Good. Everybody um, has it. Go two, ahead. two ways to get a hold of our organization is, one is uh, email is, it's just donatebrain at gmail.com, all lowercase. Okay. And our mailing address is mibdec, M-I-B-D-E-C, box 23, 3, 323, Box 323. The address is 1346 West Arrowhead Road, and that is Duluth, Minnesota, 55811. You know, I worked for a year, Tom, in Minneapolis back in 1978 to 79 at KSTP Television down there. Ah. Had a great time. Boy, was it cold in those days. Is it still cold in Minnesota? <laughs> well, it is where I live. Yes, sir. It's actually pretty cold right now. Do other countries get Lyme disease? Oh, oh, this is a worldwide phenomenon. Like I said, when, when I published my book in 1995, it was, uh, I've been to international Lyme conferences. I've been to about 20 of them. And I have actually seen stacks of my book Xerox and on tables where they were giving them away or selling them and such. Uh, so because I, I stopped printing it and uh, people just kept reprinting it because there was no information out there that Amazing. was meant for the patient. It's almost like Morgellons disease where nobody knows what these things are. Well, well at least Lyme disease is at least some people are starting to study it. I wish they more people would study Morgellons disease. Tom. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we need to get to the bottom of it. When when Morgellons first started out, their their website was very elusive and it wasn't very science oriented. And now I'm glad to see that they're they're really trying to go after the science of this. And for those that don't know, I mean, uh, it can cause terrible itching and secretions in the skin, and we just don't know what it is. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Seminole, Oklahoma, and get you in, Kathy, before the break. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. hi. Uh, while I was on hold, I thought of another point I wanted to bring up too. That um, quite a few. There's some. Uh, meaning that quite a few uh, fibromyalgia patients may, in fact, be Lyme patients uh, that have been mis Good misdiagnosed. Point. But yeah. what I primarily called about was whether he had looked into any of the successes so far um, that patients are experiencing with either rights therapy or something called MMS, um, which is basically sodium chloride mixed with... Um, um, bleh, I'm trying to... All right, and of course, Royal Rife had a machine that some people are still using... Um, do you do you recommend anything done naturally, Tom? Well, there are some things that um, seem to work. The, let's see if I have. Uh, what I would recommend is uh, looking up Dr. Ava Sappy's uh, latest paper, where she actually puts to test some things like uh, cemento, and uh, she had some other recommendations. Grapefruit seed extract seems to uh, help with help. patients. But overall, I have to say that in support group over 20 years, the natural things have not panned out as well as antibiotics. Interesting. And, but it goes both ways. I mean, antibiotics clearly is not the answer in every patient. Uh, we, we have a very difficult time in curing patients. I did want to go back to one thing that the previous caller had said about heart failure and heart problems. All right, hold on to that. We'll talk right about that, Tom, when we come right back on Coast to Coast AM. 